Welcome to Desert Island Playlist. The band this week is Cake. My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am Joe Opinionated. Today we have four guests on today. You've seen them before. Jordan Ben from Jordan Ben and the Slizneys. Tristan Armstrong. Tristan Armstrong Music and the actual Goners. Jesse Olson. Jesse Olson. And Nathan McKay. And uh, Nate, Nate's new to the panel here today. And uh, what better band than Cake? Yeah, at Christmas time, you can you can get my stuff. The Nate Before Christmas. Check out, yeah, Nate Before Christmas is an incredible. Uh, Nate, musician here from Vancouver Brown as well. Everybody here is from Vancouver Brown. Nate Before Christmas is featured on the Christmas Movie Marathon on this channel. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Today on the Desert Island Playlist, we are going with six songs, 666, Satan is my motor. Anyways, we're going from uh, youngest to oldest, draft style, like hockey pool once a song wait, is wait, taken. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, it's Nate's first day here and he's the oldest. I think we should go oldest to youngest today. We always do youngest to oldest and Tristan always fucks me. No, we're not doing that. So we're going with youngest <laughs> youngest to oldest. Uh, so that means that uh, Tristan Armstrong or is it just Tristan Armstrong? Tristan Armstrong will get the first pick. What about if we just draw straws for who goes first? By the time I get my first pick, like <laughs> my top five are going to be gone. George doesn't want to lose his first song very clearly. <laughs> My first four songs. Uh, or we could snake it. We can go back and forth. That's more fair, isn't it? Let's fucking do it. Cake was started in Sacramento in the early 90s by John McRae and uh, Greg Brown. And uh, I think Vincent DeFori Fori was there at the time as well. I don't fuck. I didn't do any research this time. They had a couple albums off the hop. And then Greg Brown is kind of a famous guitarist he left the group and then everything else is john mccray john mccray honestly wrote most of the songs in the first two albums as well that's what happened there and he was replaced by zan mccurdy they also had paulo baldi at one point on drums who is now the drummer for the lennon claypool delirium quite a few people come in and out but basically it's john mccray's baby motorcade of generosity was 1994 that was their first album fashion nugget was 1996 then they had prolonging the magic in 1998 and then they took a three-year break for Comfort Eagle, 2001. Another three-year break for Pressure Chief, 2004. A seven-year break, 2011. Showroom of Compassion. That's our last major studio release. First pick goes to Tristan Armstrong. And we got about a minute per song. Thank you very much, Joe. I feel... Uh honored and privileged to have first selection today. That is because I really was eager to claim the track Never There. Gotta get that out of the way. Love it. It's uh, such a bop and riff. And Cake has just gotta be probably the funkiest rock band to come out of the 90s. So funky all the time. Great bass lines. Never There. That's my pick. My favorite part aside from the song's awesome is the dial tone. God, mm. yeah, love that dial tone in there. A, a golden bird that flies away, a candle's fickle flame. Jesse, you are up. Same as Tristan, it's another more well-known song, but I wanted to snap it up before anybody grabbed it. You'd mentioned it earlier, Joe. In my opinion, it's one of the best openers ever. It's Frank Sinatra from Fashion Nugget. The lyrics are amazing. It's the ultimate cake song for me. Um, the other thing that really hits for me is it's used in The Sopranos when when Christopher's like running. I don't know if you remember that scene from The Sopranos where he's running and he, his name's in the newspaper and it closes that one episode. And so that's always had... A fun memory for that as well, too. But just the lyrics as well, too. An old man sits collecting stamps in a room all filled with Chinese lamps. lamps. He saves what others throw away, says it'll be rich someday. That is such an ultimate cake song for me. Frank Sinatra. Great tune selections in that series. Jordan Venn from Jordan Venn and the Slizneys. You are up. You're on the okay. clock. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the distance. I don't care. No. I don't care that I'm basic. Hell of a tune. You're in that racetrack driving alone with the sky for a lot of the song mentally i think you know what i mean ass kicking bass and nate is it a moog that uh like a mini moog or it's, yeah that synth yeah. yeah that rules an interesting thing that i learned about that song more recently is that john mccray did not write did not any write, part of yeah, it and right. and he was kind of resentful of that i think and he doesn't like the song but i mean they still play it at every show you're all fools. We're on a desert island and you didn't pick the survival song. I can go with I Will Survive. Maybe their best cover. It's a fantastic version of that song. And it's also coming out like, this is the other thing I was thinking about is it's coming out at a time where like disco was like such a, a you know, malign genre for so long. We're in the 90s. Everything is, you know, grunge. 
and they're like, here's a disco cover, and it's really great. Great guitar solo. It's yeah. great because they removed the disco from it. You're being very Facetious. silly. But there's so many am amazing songs that, that you know, get get brought back. I think they, they gave it a different meaning in a way. Yeah. Like, I Will Survive is kind of like an, the original is sort of an, in a female empowering anthem. Mm -hmm. And their version is is just has a more melancholy thing to it. Yeah. It's like he's trying to convince himself that he's going to survive. Like he's in denial. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. what I love about it too. How he changes the phrasing of each song. He's like, he's like an insecure male. Like, ah, I'll survive. Yeah. You know, like it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. how he hits the the phrasing of each thing is really cool. In that song, I love it. It was on my list too. I heard that she hates it too. Gloria Gaynor hates the version of it, understandably. But why? Because of the swearing? Because it changes the the feeling, the tone the, of it. I, I, yeah, I've heard she said that it's the worst version of that song she's ever heard oh wow, wow. <laughs> i get to go back to back this is great so the first pick on my desert island uh mixtape playlist i'm going with friend is a four-letter word off of fashion nugget something about that riff house of the rising sun chord progression and uh but i just love it when it kicks into riff very acdc like at the time i was kind of really digging old acdc one thing i do like about john mccray's singing is that it's not complicated. You can sing along to it really well. I always say like Tom Petty is something that's just super easy to sing along to. What I will say is that his it's easy to sing. It's nearly impossible to get the phrasing right. All right, round two, my second pick for my Desert Island playlist for Cake. I'm going with, uh, and Cake's the most ungoogleable band on the planet. I hate their name. Mud on your feet, like caked on mud. Okay, so my second pick comes off of uh prolonging the magic their third album i'll probably get heavy into that it's probably my favorite cake album I'm going with walk on by there's a few songs on this uh album that are just yeah they're just great cruisers i just love the melodies i love the way that john sings these songs and this is kind of his personal baby this album i mean like if you look at the credits, like once again, he writes pretty much every song, but this one, a uh, real personal to him. The song about this guy that keeps on walking by the place where he had all these memories with this girl and she's going on with her life and he just has to walk on by. That's my favorite cake song. I thought it was safe. Is it really? Should, uh, yeah, it's my favorite one. Prologue and Magic is my favorite yeah. record. And now that I know that nothing's safe, but I've got to reevaluate my whole strategy. Second okay. pick. Okay. Yeah, second pick. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh I'm gonna take something off of Comfort Eagle. This is where I, I got a few on there. I've I've got my list and way more of them are on Fashion Nugget. I'll give you that hint. And then it kind of goes down from there, but Comfort Eagle. And I've even got one from Pressure Chief. Does anyone have one from Pressure Chief? I got one yeah. from Pressure Chief. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah, I like well, I, I better be careful then because I only have the one. In that case, I'm going to call an audible. I'm going to go to Pressure Chief. I'm going to secure my one off uh, Pressure <laughs> Chief. And this is another survival song um, because I think those are going to be important on my island. Uh, I got to build resilience. And there's a great song on Pressure Chief called End of the Movie. It's a great song. It's about getting the shit kicked out of you in life, but sticking around. And it's really short and just like a perfect little tune. End of the movie. So Greg Brown stuck around and did some arrangements on Prolonging the Magic before he skipped out. And so Pressure Chief is the first album without any Greg Brown at all. There's a lot, it's a lot more, yeah, like uh, synth heavy. Well, I just want to say Nate over here having a theme for his playlist. Uh, it's probably going to be the least liked playlist by uh, your audience, show, but uh, I'm not calling them troglodytes or anything, but uh, I'm, I'm going with the hits, so I get the most hits, you know what I mean? I'm going to go with Nugget. Heads mm -hmm. of state who ride and wrangle, who look at your face from more than a, one angle, will cut you from their bloated budgets like sharpening knives to chicken McNuggets. Shut the fuck up. I like how it sounds like he's riding a horse. Oh! He, he even does like a, yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> He hits that yeah a couple of times, golden. Uh, anyways, there it is. Nugget, fun track. Jesse, oh, so that was my 12th pick. Did anybody have that one high? That was number two for me. Yeah, that's a oh, huge deal. Fuck. <laughs> oh, I just, I just love, whenever I hear that song, if I'm out for a walk or it's in the car, it's just been awesome. Like It's, it's a, a real pump up. Skip. Yeah, it is. Real for sure. I'm going to go off the board here. And, and I know we talked about how the quality of this album isn't the best overall but this is what i love about this song it's from motorcade of generosity and it's jolene the super slow intro the super raw catchy guitar riff groovy bass line great story emotional build as the trumpet kicks into the yeah yeahs the lyrics of this every time i pull you close push my face into your hair cream rinse and tobacco smoke that sickly scent is always always there and then it builds into that guitar solo with the screaming get down at the end and 
I just love all the little, there's little things that I discover every time I listen to that song as well. Like, like we said, very raw, not super polished, how John pronounces the, the word mirror in, in the mirror, like just so cool. Like little things that I pick up on when I hear that song. Jolene from Motorcade of Generosity. Tristan, Armstrong Tristan gets got- two back to back so okay how exciting i i had actually intended on on procuring a slice of cake to have as a prop but best i could do is a freshly baked uh, almond croissant <laughs> which i'll eat at some point um fawn joe and tootsie are out on a wire meth tooth junkies are full of desire meanwhile rick james takes her nude and there's nothing i can do and there's nothing i can say to you what does it mean i don't know but i dig the track that's why i'm choosing meanwhile rick james for my next selection it's a less guitar centric track although there is some nice guitar happening again very funky um really nice wurlitzer action happening in this guy it's just a groover i don't know i was listening through these albums and i there's so many songs that that just like feel great to listen to there's there's so many great selections and it brings me back to a particular time for sure there's a big nostalgia factor there's a lot on comfort eagle for sure that i dig and and fashion nugget as well as you'll see and i guess i get the next selection so maybe i will veer back to fashion nugget and i'm gonna go with daria yes just it there's there's a mystery to it to that track that I love the piano. The way the drums sound is, is kind of raw. It's a great rock and chorus. I got to choose Daria. It's interplay between the, the parts that are very concise. And it's like, it's never too dense. It's not like anyone's ever strumming away. It's it's yeah. always these these nice, tidy little parts that, that work so well together. Uh, that was number nine on my want list. Yeah, I had that pretty high. I don't, I don't rate them i just put a slab of songs i like and then try to judge what you guys are up to (laughs) i have to rate it because i get stupid on these things and just start to like you know oh yeah i really like that song and then next thing you know i just got some song that i don't even really like that much (laughs) pink floyd was embarrassing for me i'm watching that one again i was like holy jesse you were up sir with your third pick Two great picks, Tris. I love both those songs. Daria was was really high on my list as well, too. Um, speaking of Meanwhile, Rick James, I'm, I'm going to Comfort Eagle. The reason why I'm picking this song isn't just the song, it's the memory associated with this song. So in particular, that second show that we went to, which was, I don't have a lot of memories from that show. The feeling you get at a hockey game, just like this camaraderie with people you don't know, and you, you have it all the, at, at all concerts. So it's Comfort Eagle from Comfort Eagle. And just... When they get going on that song, he's in the music mm-hmm. business. He's calling you, do, and the and they stop, and everybody just erupts in that one part. That was that like like super dopamine hit feeling uh, for me. So both times yes. I saw them, they 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 brought down the house. So Comfort Eagle is such a such a driving killer song too. Like when that when that guitar hits at the beginning of the song, just there's no slow intro. It just gets right into it. So. Comfort Eagle from Comfort Eagle. Uh, up next is Jordan Van with your third pick. Let's go, bro. Uh, well, I have a few more that I could do off Fashion Nugget, but I'm going to leave that behind because I, I'm gonna. I, I want to get to Prolonging the Magic, which is obviously my favorite record. I think I'm gonna go with Don't. Uh, Mexico. Oh. It's in three. She uh, had a match. Or I had a match, but she had a lighter. I had a flame, but she had a a fire. Uh, I was was bright. She was much brighter. I was high, but she was the sky. Oh, baby, I was bound for Mexico. A real sweet song. Not instrumentally as big as other cake songs. I don't know much about Cinco de Mayo. I'm never sure what it's all about. I say you want me and you don't believe me. You say you want me, but I've got my doubts. Up next, Nate McKay. I had Mexico. My, Mexico is my my number one off of that record. It's kind of about surviving in a relationship. Well, that, that's <laughs> what I, I, I think for for a desert island pick, it's really good. It's kind of, And it's like... On those days when you're just like feeling kind of down, that's a good one to have. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Comfort Eagle, and I'm gonna I'm gonna steal uh, Shadow Stabbing. That's one of those ones I forget about because the the title isn't really the part that I think about. I think I like it, I think about the say it all part. I'm like, oh, say, that's say it all. It's got like every element of a classic cake song that you would want. Like if you just need like an archetypal cake song. And with, with that song is uh, the influence of the band The Cars. When it gets to the chorus and it goes to the more driving rock, yeah. at that point, it's just like, it seemed like really a Cars kind of vibe. It's me, back to back. So my third and fourth pick, my third pick and my fourth pick, both come off of 
prolonging the magic. First pick is Alpha Beta parking lot, standing in the Alpha Beta parking lot, watching the sunset. I'll never forget. Such a great song to sing along to. And the second one is guitar. And uh, mm. I really mm-hmm. love guitar. I love the chorus. If I threw my guitar out the window so far, I just love what they do with, yeah, with the vocals on that one, especially. The story for me for prolonging the magic and I've told it before on this channel. I also have another cake episode on this channel. The story was, is that I, when I moved to Victoria, I had this little truck. I had cake prolonging the magic on CD and I put it in the CD deck and it got stuck in there. Uh, it was stuck in there to the day that like the, the, the person who owned the vehicle took it back. So it was about a month. I never got sick of it. Anyways, guitar and Alpha Beta parking lot, both from prolonging the magic. You know, the musical saw at the end, like that one flew over the cuckoo's nest vibe. You know, the, the one flew over the cuckoo's nest theme, like that kind of like, and, and so whenever I, it's one of my favorite movies. So when I first heard that sound in guitar, it made me like guitar more. Uh, it's just an interesting, underused, you know, whimsical kind of sound. So the musical saw. Good. I, originally, the song was going to be called Saw. And it was, then they realized that if they encourage people to throw saws off balconies, that people could really get hurt. And so they uh, changed it to guitar. Is that just true? Talking. No. Oh, <laughs> Next up, Nate McKay. Nate McKay, fourth oh, round. Yeah. Oh, I just want to say, Joe, that uh, nothing's nothing safe here. Those two songs were my next two that I was going to pick, Ooh. and that really hurts. I could so. tell that we have very similar tastes in these. And the funny thing is, yeah. when when we were riding around in your vehicle or with Nate and all this, I wasn't really into uh, prolonging the magic at that point. It wasn't until after that year when I got that CD stuck in my car that I just fell in love with it. Okay, go ahead, Nate. You are up. While I was going through this, at a certain point, I was kind of, I thought I could make my entire um, cake list out of covers. I'm not doing it, but I do want to hit all of the, uh, like as many albums as I can. So I'm going to go for something off the B-sides. And this is a, this is a cover. It's actually written by an Italian composer. It's Piero Umiliani, and he wrote it for an Italian film about Sweden. So it was a, it was a documentary about Sweden. It was kind of like a saucy documentary about lesbians and you know nudity. It was called Sweden, Heaven and Hell. This is way back in the day. And the song, you probably know better from uh, The Muppets. It's the uh, Manamana. I'm going to take Menomina. Some days you'll have, you want to be in a fun mood. Great, great version of it. When you get a cover version, you get all of them. The DNA of all of them is, is inside there. That's good research, Nate. Yeah. I'm going to put on the forceps for this one. Uh, sheep go to heaven, goats go to hell. It's kind of like in the vein of, I don't want to go to work. I just want to bang on my drum all day. He is saying he wants to be a goat. Live your life, you know? I love the line too. As soon as you're born, you start dying. Yeah. Mm. You might as well, have, might a as well have a good time. That's why <laughs> main thesis, I think of the song actually. Goats go to hell, but at least you lived your life. When's it coming back to me? How is this working here? <laughs> you're going to have feel like I've been waiting for it. <laughs> you, you got two after me. <laughs> you're next. No, I'm going to go with my one pressure chief song now and this one for me i was really fortunate lucky to travel for 10 months a year for like seven years and so this song there's one line that just i feel like i experienced this this whole verse so many different times in so many different places of the world in a seedy karaoke bar by the banks of the mighty bosphorus the japanese man in a business suit singing smoke gets in your eyes the muscular cyborg German dudes dance with sexy French Canadians while the overweight Americans wear their patriotic jumpsuits. The song's Wheels. I didn't like the song when I first heard it. We went to the the, the 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 tour for that particular album. So many times where I was in layovers or I was in a different country, I was up an overnight, and I just kind of felt like I experienced something so similar to that. You know, the, the guy singing karaoke, the European macho guy that was like taking the girl, the, the Americans that are completely out of place. I feel like I experienced that so many different times the other thing i love about that song too is you talked about this earlier how john always has that kind of steadfast monotone spoken word but the end of wheels is like one of the most contrasted emotional why you say you're not in love with me gets really high and he really kind of nails it at the end so it's rare for him to do that and so that always kind of hits me as well to the the end of the, the song he's super emotional out of character so wheels from Pressure Chief. Tristan Armstrong, you've been waiting a long time. I'm chomping at the bit, back to, yeah. Back to back. Um, guitar was on my list, and uh, the song itself has some great guitar playing in it, as do so many Cake songs. It's, it's my understanding that they've had a couple different guitar players over the years, but right. both great players, and like, you know, there's, uh, there's a twang. There, there's definitely a, a sort of country influence to the guitar playing style. 
uh, maybe like a rockabilly and surf elements, but like early rock and roll kind of vibe, just never heavily distorted, really. It's just kind of chunky, fat, single line guitar playing. So this track uh, has pedal steel on guitar in it. I think it's the only song I can think of that has pedal steel on it. She'll come back to me. And again, in the country vein, I was just looking up the lyrics. The, the, the lyrical content is quite minimal in this track. Aside from the, the chorus, there's like four lines. Despite it being country, it still has the funky bass. In the cake, I gravitate to the bass lines in a lot of my selections. And so my second choice here, I'm going to uh, flip flop back to uh, Comfort Eagle and go with the opener, Opera Singer. Opera Singer. And, and this, this track, track. I, I find highly amusing for a couple of reasons mm -hmm. you know it's a it's a tangible sort of account uh, of just he's talking he's an opera singer these are the things that he does this is why people love him he talks about his day as an opera singer wakes up at 10 a.m he he gets dressed he has rehearsals that last for hours and hours with diligence i am blessed he's singing uh, you know john in his way that he sings and you're like you kidding me this guy's an opera singer you gotta be shitting me that's my pick opera singer <laughs> I'm going to just take this one then. It's, a, it's a, another popular one. It's kind of always reminded me a little bit of like a never there. Um, I'm going to take Love You Madly. The reason why there's like a really, it's almost like a throwaway line, but it always made me think, that, you know, this song is about, hey, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm, we're going to make this work no matter what. Like, we're going to make this work. And I love this one line. And I, maybe I've overthought this, but maybe maybe it's hit for you guys as well, too. He just says it kind of offhandedly goes, the ornaments look pretty, but they're pulling down the branches of the tree. It's mm -hmm. okay. But, but I just like have that visual of like, hey, listen, they're beautiful, but... You know, logistically, this isn't really working, but I know that you love this, but so I'm going to let it go. I just love that line for whatever re reason. The ornaments look pretty, but they're pulling down the branches of the tree. Maybe I've overthought it, but it's my it's favorite. It's a great line. line. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It yeah. sticks out in my mind for that yeah. tune as well, that particular line. And how he sings it too is, you know, one of those McRae things again, too. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Jordan Van, you are up with your fifth pick. Uh, has anybody chosen let me go i think i'm gonna choose let me go then let me go she said if you love something let it go if it yeah. comes back it's yours that's how you know kind of to quote christina aguilera the song about giving your partner space and yeah. they'll, they'll want you more nate mckay you're up next pick five you got two picks to go here in the case where like uh someone else uh like swims into my island i need a sexy song i'm gonna pick um Never, never gonna give you up. We got a, we got a Barry White cover. Great version. It's like the most unsexy version of a sexy song, and maybe that, it, maybe it almost flips into being sexy again. A good thing to have in my, in my arsenal. Never, never gonna give you up. So we're doing six picks, uh, just because the cake has a bit of a limited dis discography. They've only got six studio records. And my next pick comes off of prolonging the magic. The song is Satan is my motor. I had that one written across my chest uh, at one of the shows there. I've got wheels of polished steel. I've got tires that grab the road. Satan is my motor. Hear my motor purr. I love that. My last pick. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go. Oh, man. I don't think I have anything off of Pressure Chief, which is kind of shitty because I do quite like a few songs on there. Pick one from there. But I'm going to go with uh, Motorcade Generosity. I'm going to pick rock and roll lifestyle as being the only song that i really like from that album to be honest with you i don't know i just love that riff i love the lyrics so fucking much i think i quoted that one maybe more than any other cake song throughout the years i just think it's so clever how much did you pay for the rock and roll t-shirt that proves you were there that you heard of them first how do you afford your rock and roll lifestyle so that's my last pick and nate mckay you were up like the original making fun of hipsters song yeah this is hard um, and actually, it's interesting because I had way more, I, I thought all the ones that I, you know, that I selected were going to go and a lot of them didn't, you know, maybe they have a deeper uh, discography than maybe I, I thought. I, I think I got to get something off Fashion Nugget and I, I, I'm going to take, and I don't think this has been taken yet, um, Italian Leather Sofa is still available. You know, it'll remind me of the, uh, the time that we, that we spent playing that song. So that's nice to have on my island <laughs> for, you know, uh, nostalgia's sake. Will make me think of the fine Swiss time pieces. I'm I didn't good. take it on purpose because I wanted you to have it. Well, thanks. I thought, That's, no, I appreciate that. There's like a few like never there. I wouldn't have taken even e even though it's one of my favorites. But I also like if I know something is somebody's has a if somebody has a close connection to a song. Oh, I want that person to have it. You know, well, appreciate um, it. Yeah, <laughs> this this song will forever Very remind generous. me of you as well. Jordan Van gets the 
desert island most sportsman like award uh, italian leather sofa it has kind of like a jam in it they don't yeah, really that, jam yeah, yeah. they don't jam too much as a band but that one kind of like opens up and it's cool nate i don't even i barely know you i've spoken to you a couple times after the end of the shows but like just like jordan said that song reminds me of you and how you sung that at the queens in 2002 or whatever it is and it like triggered me to go buy fashion nuggets so it had a lasting effect i'm glad that you took it she's got a serrated edge that she moves back but just everything about this song is is perfect and it's really the song that got me in the cake so thanks nate and thanks jordan what what a great way to end this podcast um as usual i'm jordan pinionated who's got the next pick um it's me okay open book what a cool jam it is like the uh it starts off with kind of like a guitar riff that's um a bit uh what's the word i'm looking for like has a tiny bit of dissonance in it it breaks into this it's like almost atonal in a way kind of chromatic chorus the open book come in on a different harmony yeah, it's yeah, super that's a cool crunchy i think it's a really ballsy thing to do in rock and roll to have like semitonal dissonant vocal harmonies puts a lot of tension in and then and then he kind of trails like you don't know which page to turn to do you do you do you and then it's back into the back into the groove lots of cool trumpet in it that's one of the only ones that greg brown co-wrote as well great pick jord jesse olsen your final pick for your yeah. desert island playlist also tempted to take short skirt just to talk about it a little bit because it's one of those it's one of those songs that i think like it was overplayed a lot but it's just still such a great song so maybe we can talk about it at the very end but my last song this is for you joe because i know how much you love prolong the magic this one has grown on me lately so going back and re-listening in preparation for this um the song for me is you turn the screws and I love the gentle piano intro into the trumpet. Uh, um, and then it just kind of kicks in with like a real funky beat. Uh, you twist the knife, then go home and kiss your wife. A bigger, better slice is what you like. It, it, one of the, one of the McRae phrase things that he does again too, but just uh, it's a great song. Like I, I, it was kind of lost in the shuffle for me. And so going back and giving prolonging magic uh, another shot, I've, I've always been very fashion nugget heavy and I almost like I skipped over it for comfort Eagle and um, pressure chief a little bit when that came out, but um, you turn the screws and it really jumped up for me. So interesting. I will say the song that was controversial that some people really like, and I don't is cool blue reason. I've oh never, yeah. I've never liked that song, but I got a bunch of a few other cake fans out there. Just love that shit. Punk rock. Red, white, and blue. Last pick goes to Tristan Armstrong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's inevitable. Choose a song which is fast and thorough and sharp as attack. Nice. She's touring the facility and picking up slack. Yeah, short skirt, long jacket. I, there was a, there was a, a period of time when I stopped listening to the song and I was hesitant to choose it today. And I just remembered through the course of this podcast why it was. It was because I was driving in my car and hit a deer along the side of the highway. <laughs> and this song was playing at that time. And I associated it with that moment. But I've moved on, evidently. I can enjoy it again. And it is an enjoyable track. It was a hit for a reason. It was a massive hit. Part of the reason was the music video was a real hoot you know it was a music video of that time of, of people doing this kind of low budget thing like i i put it into the same category as like fat boy slim praise you uh, of like sort of these low budget movies with involving the public um and it was just it, it was a pretty funny video you know super catchy riff and 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 just great uh great lyrics throughout you can't deny it changing There's... her name from kitty to karen she's changing yes. her mg to a white chrysler LeBaron. one of my favorite lyrics ever in a song is and it, maybe it's because i work in a corporate environment i want a girl with uninterrupted prosperity who uses a machete to cut through red tape just that fucking yeah this fucking Let's cut through the bullshit. Get to it. So thank you guys for the Desert Island playlist. No. What a great way to end. Anyways, yeah. So let's just go around the board quickly. And uh, we'll start with you. Jesse doesn't have anything to share. You two. Talentless non-musician hack once again. So check out Jordan Venn and the Slizneys. Check out the Nate Before Christmas. Check out every band that Tristan's working on right now because he's working on a lot including a new cake cover band which I just heard and you can cut this but you can you can also go with it all three of you too and sorry Joe you're also awesome but all three of you I've seen you all play so many times and you're all just fucking incredible musicians and just I've loved watching you all over the years so there you go I'll end it on that so let's uh let's just kind of go around the board quickly and just kind of what's your experience with cake well the only reason I wanted to say this is and thanks guys for switching this from last week is this is a really cool podcast for me to be on in particularly because the people that are on this podcast for me. So 
obviously 2001 comfort eagle comes out short skirt long jacket comes out everybody hears it but it wasn't until 2002 when my buddy joe snuck me into the queens when i was 18 years old and i got to go watch a local nanaimo band called the fine swiss timepieces playing italian leather sofa that i immediately went out and bought a cd fashion nugget got the album now but obviously had the cd at the time and fell in love with that album i believe you guys also played Stick shit, stick shifts and safety belts as well too. I, I just remember short skirt, long jacket. Yeah, for sure. And but I remember in particular Italian leather sofa and how you guys played that, and it was just awesome. That was when I fell in love with Cake. I went and went and, and listened to Fashion Nugget over and over and over again. Years later, me and Joe got to go to two concerts together in Vancouver. The second of which I'm sure he'll touch on at one point. Absolutely blackout drunk. He got a tree from John McRae. Amazing experience. So really cool in particular to be on this podcast with this group of people. Tristan Armstrong. Just remembering now actually that I was exposed to Cake uh, through a bandmate that that was uh, in my first ever band that I was in, a rock band in high school, a guy named Isaac. He uh, hipped me to the Fashion Nugget album. It took me a little bit of warming up to at that time because I was like, you know, at an age where I, I was mostly being fed uh, just kind of classic rock sort of stuff, Zeppelin, what have you. This is a lot more quirky, but pretty interesting and, and and funny and like uh the guitar playing was really great never got to see cake live although i did have an opportunity to to perhaps see them but i was at this festival in san francisco i was there with my girlfriend at the time primus was happening at the same time and she's like i need to see primus i was like primus we, we gotta see cake anyway she was not getting it and primus sucked like i hated <laughs> it so i missed cake and that was my one chance. Jordan Van, how did you uh, get introduced to Cake? First time I ever heard Cake was on a TSN NHL hits compilation. It was set to I Will Survive, uh, which I thought probably for about four years was their original song. Didn't like those songs for a long time. And then Nate McKay was into them. And we started playing Italian Leather Sofa for Swiss Time Pieces. It was pretty dope. And I, and I guess I listened to Fashion Nugget from there. There, there it is. Never seen them live. Don't have any fun stories about a girlfriend dragging me to the other stage. Uh, I just, you know, I'm a bit of a hermit. I live in a cave and uh, I try not to get out as much as possible. There it is. Nate? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I think I was firmly like introduced in the, in that fashion nugget era and i think it was just the distance was everywhere like it was everywhere it was one of those songs that you just like i heard that a million times and then i will survive like those two cake is actually secretly almost a cover band like so many of their great songs are covered yeah man i never realized that uh sad songs and waltzes was a cover until one time i asked my smart speaker to play it my introduction to cake was sitting at my house and watching much music and frank sinatra came on totally different than anything i ever heard and what's that thing called the uh, Vibra Slap. Vibra Slap. Vibra Slap. I thought of a clever thing to say about the first record. It's kind of half-baked. It was Frank Sinatra, and then that was right around, just before Short Skirt, Long Jacket came out, just before these guys were in a band called the Fine Swiss Time Pieces. I was definitely going to a lot of those shows, and that's how I got into Ween. Or, sorry, that's how I got into Cake. <laughs> I have another video on my channel as well where I kind of get a bit more into it. I kind of stay a little bit PG. Jesse and I saw Cake twice live in Vancouver both times, one at the Centre and one at the Vogue Theatre. The one at the Centre was the first time we saw them, and I'm pretty sure that was for the Pressure Chief tour we were right on the stage they said we don't have a set list tonight like just whatever we even got them to sing happy birthday and like fuck everything anyways it was an amazing show and i was just like holy shit there's a whole bunch of songs that i learned that night and then jesse and i went and saw them again and the second time that we saw them at the vogue theater was quite the day an excessive amount of alcohol and made our way down to the Vogue Theater, kind of in the middle of the plaza seats. And uh, me and Jesse were pretty happy and uh, standing the whole show, even though there was nobody standing, about 10 rows in front and 10 rows behind us. Yeah, I even got a tree at one point. He asked the crowd who the uh, oldest person in the audience was. He's going to give that person the tree. And I said it was me. And I was halfway back to my seat when he's like, wait a second. Why was there a tree? You're not the <laughs> oldest person in the trees crowd. at their shows sometimes. Yeah, oh, okay. give, no, every show they give away a tree. Yeah. It's because John had planted a tree out on his boulevard in front of his house. He planted a tree once. And then he came back to this house like a few years later. And the tree was massive. Tristan Armstrong, what you got going on right now? Uh, anything you'd like to to promote? Tristan's a musician. He's got uh, Bandcamp, uh, Tristan Armstrong Music. Uh, uh, at this at this point, it, it's it's more of a stay tuned scenario, hoping to have the album out by the end of this calendar year. And at that point, you can go to any streaming service and type in my name and voila, there it will be. What's your last single, Dressed the Lender? 
Yeah, I think that's the most recent one. Nathan McKay, what do you got going on right what, now? What Any, to, it, where can they find you? Where can they find yeah. your music? Uh, yeah, no, you, <laughs> yeah, I exclusively release Chris's music right now. Um, so I should probably fix that. I, I feel terrible. I have my own podcast. You can listen to that. It's called Meet Me in the Stacks. It's a, 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 a library podcast. <laughs> you can listen to my library podcast if you want. You can find me there. It's on the wherever you get your podcasts. Meet Are you talking about stacks. books? What are you talking about on that podcast? Oh, we talk about all sorts of things um we talk to authors we talk to people about books there's book trivia i talk about all sorts of things i don't know anything about it well the, you know a great place to start would be the uh meet me in the sax podcast jordan ben all right uh nate can i just ask you when we did that podcasting was that that's uh, right the you're sax? on it yeah you're yeah. on it yeah don't want to brag guys but i'm on it yeah you're you're on it um you, there's a whole segment of jordan making animal sounds which is uh, pretty incredible yeah <laughs> Yeah. Where can they find this podcast, Nate? Uh, anywhere you find your podcasts. That one's the, I think it's the Goose Feather episode. You're going to find me on any streaming site. I am also putting out a new record. Some of you may have realized it's the 30th anniversary of the greatest summer of music that ever happened. So this one's a, a trio, power trio record. There's only pretty much ever one guitar part, one bass part, one drum part. Make an homage from a, uh, a year that was being so formative for my musical taste. I thought that I should do something and try and try and release. So I'm going to try and release it this summer. It's coming along. So it's called Magic Words. Yeah. So that's Jordan Venn, Jordan Venn and the Slizneys. Is this, a, is this another yeah. Slizneys record? Uh, it is. It's like a Slizney's light record. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe below. Uh, let us know who got the best Desert Island playlist and why we're idiots for missing your favorite track. Uh, a lot of links in the description as well for some things that we've been talking about. Maybe some live performances, also some recent gigs, and some of the, and all of these musicians, Nate McKay. Tristan Armstrong and Jordan Venn. There'll be links to their channels, their music below in the description. Please check that out. Maybe go back and check out my old Cake one. The, the problem that I had with that one was that at the time, Cake hadn't repressed all their albums to vinyl. And so I basically spent the whole time bitching about how expensive the records are to like prolonging the magic. I, I'm not even sure if it was the same week that I loaded the video that they announced they were re-releasing all of them onto vinyl and it did not age well. I even show like a, an image of like how much it currently costs on eBay and shit like that. I remember that. Yeah. I am sorry. I'm a little low <laughs> on facts and high on opinions. Respect to Cake. Respect to these guys. And we'll catch you on the next one. We out.